sub urban suburban or sub urban suburb sub let's google it Let's call him Daniel. <laughs> this is a name that I have heard so much in my comment section and in my discord This one's for you guys. I'm really keen to listen to him and see what he's all about I think we'll just get into it. We're gonna do something a little different in this video though I'm gonna listen to one of his live performances because I was on his YouTube channel and there was only a few songs So I thought it'd be cool to watch something live The first one is called freak and this is an official music video and only released like a few months ago. Heck yeah all right, so we're going for like another sort of horror theme musician. Oh, such a fine collection of strangers. This one reminds me of American Horror Story. And two reminds me of Carousel by Melanie Martinez. It has certainly got a feel to it. I'm, I am, I'm ready. My patience running thinner on this melting I hate eye stuff, man. Don't do that again, please. His voice is a lot, like, deeper than I expected. Very breathy. Ooh, soft little drop. That was nice. Yo, that's so simple. I'm not really sure what she's saying, though. It kind of sounds like she's saying banana over and over again. But yeah, there's not much to that drop, but it's still quite nice and satisfying. I will say that while I liked his vocal delivery style, I felt myself struggling to understand somewhat what he was actually saying. I mean, that's an obvious line. <laughs> I don't know if it's just like because I watched Freak Show, but there's something about me that feels so much sympathy and sadness for the fact that not even all that long ago, there were entire shows dedicated to making people seem like absolute outsiders and like freaks, just making people feel awful for money. I mean, not that that definitely doesn't still happen in our lives, but just, I don't know, there's something so predatory about that. I'm not sure if it's what he's going for, but I guess you could always draw parallels between that and to an extent the entertainment industry, right? Because people who are high up in the entertainment industry kind of profit off of putting people on display like that. And sometimes with artists who talk about very deep topics and things that are personal to themselves, somewhat profiting off of like emotional damage, right? You're my creation. And yeah, maybe you can draw some sort of parallels to it in that like, he's like unveiling his creation that's meant to be something like damaged and imperfect. Whether that creation is like a song or like his persona as an artist. I will say again, like, maybe it's just me, but I'm struggling a little bit to uh, understand those lyrics here, but the melody is dope. That's so low key, but so dope. Man, that feels like it's straight out of American Horror Story. It does seem to have that like idea of people thinking that people have some sort of problem or disease that needs to be fixed. And it's like, hey, sometimes what you perceive as a problem for someone else, they don't and they don't need you to fix them. They're happy the way they are and they accept themselves, so you should too. I don't know, maybe I'm reading too much into it. Dude, I can't get over how simple that is, but how dope it is. Also, he kind of looks like an edgy Finn Wolfhard. <laughs> also love the uh, Salvador Dali references. Sufficiently terrifying. I think mostly I really like how simple and effective that was. It didn't needlessly complicate things. I feel like that's a song where he had a very clear vision of what he wanted it to sound like and how he wanted to write it, which just resulted in kind of like everything coming together quite cleanly, not running on too long, but also doing a lot with really quite little. I'm impressed and it's a really interesting first glance into his stuff. This one is called Cliche and this is the live version. I'm ready to be impressed. Show me your stage presence. Oh wait, is this not like performing live? It's just a live recorded video. I like the imperfections in his voice there. It's a little husky, couple of like off notes, but like it brings everything together to me. Okay, this one's got a bit more lyricism to it. It's half rapping. Really cool flow. 
he's somehow like more low key, but also more hype than I expected on stage. The husky, like, imperfect tone of his voice gives him that really grungy feel, especially with all the instruments going on there. Man, I love that he just doesn't seem to care. So much attitude. Is this just like live on a soundstage? I can't tell if there's a crowd or not. You better all be fucking clapping from home. <laughs> okay. I'm clapping, Daniel. Please don't hurt me. The way that he moves and dances reminds me a lot of Troy Sivar. <laughs> No, I thought he was literally gonna throw that microphone. If he doesn't drop it, I'm gonna be disappointed. Come on, give me a mic drop. Drop it. Damn it, he didn't drop the mic. That was also really cool. I really wonder what that would be like on a studio version. And please don't take this as me like insulting him, but in that there were quite a few like off notes, mostly a little bit flat, but in my opinion, it added to the overall sound. And so my big curiosity would be in the recorded version of that, do they leave those like slightly flat notes in? Because it might actually make it sound really interesting and cool as long as it's not like done too much. And it especially gives that kind of like throwaway feeling he was going for there of just like not caring. Hey, here's the song. I'm just gonna sing some lyrics. So, I mean, if you can complete it like that, that's potentially really, really interesting. All right, the last one is called Cradles. This I think was like the big one. Yeah, literally 200 million views in less than a year. My God. So this like blew up. Let's hear it. Oh, this sounds ever so vaguely familiar. <laughs> Man, super interesting visuals already. You can see the massive increase in production quality as well. It's gonna. Hush. Ah, it's another song I know from TikTok. This is 100% on TikTok, right? Oh, hold up, 2.4 million videos. Okay, I knew that I'd heard this on TikTok. But weirdly, I've not heard the vocals, just that little drop bit. Why is this reminding me of Silent Hill? I hate it. <laughs> Such a cool beat though. It's like music box mixed with trap, mixed with some electronica. It's awesome. I Wait, was that a Half-Life reference? It legitimately looked like a head crab from Half-Life. Maybe it is meant to be that. That is cool. Weird that I just randomly caught that reference. Kids screaming in the cradles, profanity. That's... that's just dis disturbing. Sometimes I can't tell if my body I mentioned this in my video on Cave Town, I think, but I love when artists like have little animated bits over live action. Oh, syncing up like practical sound effects with the actual beat. That's a really cool idea. Oh, that's like a slow down? Is that a full tempo change? That was really cool. What a nice change. <laughs> that was cool as well. He's like in a straight jacket bonking his head against the wall to the beat. Yo, that was dope. I'm going to add that one to my playlist. Hold up. There we go. Add it to my playlist. If you want to follow my Spotify playlist, the link is in the description below. So overall, like really cool, really interesting vibe. I appreciate what he's going for. I feel like relatively recently, we've had a trend, almost like a resurgence of the like musicians that sing about dark stuff and use spooky, scary visuals. I'm not sure what brought it about. I feel like it might have been Billie Eilish that really brought it back into the spotlight. Obviously there were artists doing it before her, but because of her massive mainstream success, I feel like that's really influenced it, but it's really cool and I'm all for it. It kind of brings early 2000s scene aesthetics into a pop sound and that just makes little 2000s emo Matthew so happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting and I feel like one thing about it is like because if I'm honest creating stuff like this can be risky 
because if you don't do it right, it can be a little bit cringy. But what that means is that if people are taking those risks, it encourages other artists to take those risks in kind of all facets of art and music. If you see other artists taking risks, you as an artist can be like, oh, that means that I can take a risk. It doesn't have to be the same one. You don't have to go down the like dark or like slightly edgy path, but it means you can try other stuff, try blending different genres or try using different visuals or telling stories that you aren't sure whether they can be told. And I guess ultimately that's what I really like about this sort of stuff is that it encourages taking risks with your art. And what that results in is really cool progression of what artists are capable of. And we as the audience get so spoiled in such an amazing way when that happens. Please let me know what you think down below in the comments, whether you agree or disagree with anything I've said. I'm always, always keen to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to click that like button.